This week we have tons of news, from upcoming verified titles including a game from From Software, to a potential security vulnerability baked right into the Steam Deck CPU. We're going to talk about all of this. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon, the highly anticipated upcoming title from, well, From Software, is coming to the Steam Deck. The game's director, Masaru Yamamura, said in an interview with Digital Trends that the game would be fully supported on the Steam Deck. Quote, Obviously, seeing how well Elden Ring performed on the Steam Deck, we were very happy, and we wanted to at least create that as a baseline going forward for the handheld. So it is fully supported for Steam Deck. We just want to reassure players that it will be fully supported. And this is great news for Armored Core fans, but also the Steam Deck as it only continues to grow in popularity. And given Elden Ring's incredible performance on deck, I suspect that we'll see a similar terrific experience with Armored Core. Now, this game is launching August 25th on all major platforms, and it will be interesting to see if Valve releases a new version of Proton to coincide with Armored Core 6 debut state. Are you excited for Armored Core 6? Leave me a comment and let me know. Next up, reviews are coming in for Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and it seems to have excellent performance on deck. Digital Foundry, the preeminent authority on all things framerate, got their hands on the game, and they were able to tweak some settings to make the title look, but more importantly, perform great on deck. Now, I'm seriously impressed with how nice everything looks and what the Steam Deck is capable of. I mean, if you can forgive the absolutely like objective potato quality Twitter compression here. Uh, the complexity of the scenes, the shaders and the quality of all the models. I mean, this just looks terrific. It's hard for me to believe that this is running on Steam Deck. Uh, I am really stoked to see all these PlayStation games coming to deck. And now only if Nintendo would release their games on Steam. Maybe since the Saudi government took a minority stake in Nintendo, they might actually push them to put their games on other platforms. We'll see. <laughs> Now I'm going to Vermont this weekend for a wedding and I'm definitely bringing my deck. Uh, I'll be playing Ratchet and Clank in the hotel when we've got a few minutes to spare. And I'm curious if you're gonna be picking this title up too. Sound off in the comments below. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. I wanna give a special shout out to Sheldon Halcom, one of my top tier Singularity supporters over on Patreon. It's due to these 79 members that I'm able to keep the lights on over here and we have a lot of lights and I just looked directly into this light and now I can't read anything. Anyway, if you believe in the work that I'm doing here, you can support this show with a monthly pledge. There are links down below to Patreon as well as YouTube memberships and ViewSync premium subscribers. So thank you very much. Next up, I wanted to talk about the Heroic Games launcher adding support for Amazon Prime Gaming. In case you missed it, and it seems like many people did, uh, I posted a video on Wednesday talking about the growing capabilities of Heroic and what I think might be next for their app. But I only kind of briefly touched on the whole reason I was talking about Heroic in the first place, and that's the inclusion of Amazon Prime Gaming um, in Heroic. Now, it, it, to me, that's a no-brainer inclusion, Although, to be honest, before any of this uh, news broke, I had no idea that Amazon was doing any of this. But I mean, of course they are. Amazon Prime Gaming here is an exciting addition for anyone who maintains a library on their service. And to quote Heroic's uh, release notes, Heroic Games Launcher version 2.9.0 is finally here, and we're excited to announce a ton of new features and improvements that we think you'll love. First and foremost, we've integrated Amazon games into the launcher. This means that you can now access all of your Amazon Prime games from within the Heroic Games Launcher, making it easier than ever to manage and play all your favorite games in one place. So I don't know how long Amazon's been doing this, but apparently you get free games each month if you're a Prime subscriber. Knowing Amazon though, I was thinking it was going to be games like exclusively shovelware for their fork of Android. So I was surprised to see games more in the lines of Shovel Knight rather than shovelware uh, available for free for Prime subscribers. Honestly, that seems like a common tactic these days for other service providers to gain a subscriber base. But now I'm actually curious, has this tactic worked? Have you ever made a purchase for a game on their storefront? And how many Linux gamers have actually been taking advantage of this? And did you know uh, that this was even a thing? I, I had no idea. Leave me a comment and let me know. All right, so during the summer sale, the Steam Deck sold out in the UK. This was due to deep discounts Valve was offering on the device. I mean, the 512 gigabyte model was like 20% off. The Steam Summer Sale has been over for weeks now, and the UK is finally starting to get Steam Deck models back in stock. So consider this a PSA in case you live in that region and you're looking to pick up a Steam Deck. Next up, let's talk about this new release of Proton. 
Proton 8.0.3 comes with tons of fixes. Newly playable games in this version of Proton include Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Minecraft Legends, Company of Heroes Battle of Crete, and Super Bomberman R, among others. Some of the more important updates for this release include fixes for third-party launchers, including Battle.net, EA, and Ubisoft Connect. Uh, they also addressed a few Proton 8.0 regressions, including uh, the Halo Master Chief Collection menus being completely broken, uh, GTA 5's freezing on keyboard input, Gears 5 login issues, Spider-Man remastered ignoring the uh, controller inputs, and many more. Now, Proton 8.0-3 includes the usual spate of game-specific fixes, as well as upgrading the latest stable versions of DXVK and VKD3D. All in all, yet another solid Proton release, making the Steam Deck that much more compatible with your existing library. And these are welcome additions for sure. Okay, finally, the big news this week, Zenbleed. Now, if you haven't heard about this, it's quite the development in terms of security. Uh, do you remember Spectre and Meltdown, the speculative execution exploit for Intel and AMD processors a few years back? I certainly do. I was working an IT job at the time, and it was a big deal upgrading every PC on premises and on the server side to make sure that the latest OSs and firmware updates were installed to protect against attack. Well, Zenbleed is a new vulnerability in the same in the vein. Get it? Because Zen bleed. <laughs> I'll show myself out. Now, these are all vulnerabilities in the way your CPU uses an optimization process called speculative execution, where the processor tries to guess the results of operations before it actually executes them and does calculations ahead of time based on those guesses in order to speed things up. However, if it guesses wrong and performs a task it didn't need to, then the data that it used for those tasks may just be hanging out in the CPU's register and other threads or applications could theoretically access them. them. Zenbleed does just this, taking advantage of faulty speculative execution cleanup routines. Now, pretty much every Zen 2 based CPU can be exploited to leak sensitive data at an astonishing rate of 30 kilobytes per core per second. Now, if my math is correct on my 12 core CPU here, that's about one third of a megabyte per second. So how does any of this relate to the Steam Deck? Well, it's pretty simple. The Steam Deck's CPU is based on Ryzen architecture. Now, despite the fact that the Steam Deck's custom APU called Aerith is purpose-built by AMD for the Steam Deck, they did not reinvent the wheel here. While I can't find any specifics on exactly which CPU series the Steam Deck's Aerith processor is based on, Valve has gone on record saying that it's comparable to a Ryzen 3000 unit. And given that it's Zen 2, and that any Zen 2 CPU in the 3000, 4000, or 5000 series are vulnerable to this attack, it makes me think that the Zen 2 powered Steam Deck would also be vulnerable. Now keep in mind, this is just my speculation here. Until we have any news about this, take this with a grain of salt. But if the deck is vulnerable to uh, Zenbleed, then the deck will in all likelihood automatically receive an update to the CPU's firmware when a patch is issued from AMD. However, fixes to address Zenbleed aren't actually scheduled for release until December of this year. Now, the question is, will a potential Zenbleed patch negatively affect performance on the Samsung deck? Only time will tell, honestly, but I believe that given the deck's position in the market as a power-efficient handheld gaming monster, I suspect any patch will get special attention for performance. Well, that's pretty much all the news that I could find this week, and I've shared my thoughts, so it's time for you to share yours. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't had a chance to check out the new merch store, check it out. Head over to GardnerBryant.com. The new store comes with lower prices too, so I'm pretty excited about that. I want to thank all these fine folks who support this show on Patreon, as well as YouTube members and my ViewSync subscribers. It's because of them that I'll be able to continue making this show better and better. If you believe in the work that I do, you can use the links below to pledge your support. It's all greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today, and I'll see you in the next one.